the wells will run out of energy, that, right. that the, you will no longer have the, the pressure, the pressure drop between the formation and the well bore, and you won't be able to get any more gas out of it. But it, that takes, that'll take decades to do. And it's no different with any other uh, hydrocarbon resource. Eventually, the reservoir depletes and, and so forth. The country needs the natural gas. I mean, the, the alternative, remember, we were running out of natural gas, so the alternative is to import liquefied natural gas or produce our own. So what we're in effect doing is we are producing our own. But it goes beyond that, and it's, it is an issue of, of economic growth and jobs for the country, that with the growing production comes all sorts of other potential uses for the gas that stimulates investment. So the steel mill that, that is being built in Ohio, the power plant that is being built in Pennsylvania, the chemical plant that is being built in the, in the Gulf Coast. You're talking about many billions of dollars of investments, and you're talking about you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs as the, the economic benefits of affordable energy come. And beyond that, it also creates the opportunity to export natural gas, uh, just like we export agricultural products, we export our technology products, we can ex export, rather than import liquefied natural gas, we can export it, and that helps our balance of payments, that promotes free trade, um, and the economic benefits for the country are great. Now, your point, sir, is absolutely right on about doing it safely and better, and, and we are all committed to that. But I would tell you that the technology to do it in a safe, responsible way is there today. The, the, the success story of Shell Gas is there today. And what Jack is describing is that there is a well-known set of practices, if you follow them, if you, you do it carefully, which is what we do, then it can be done in a safe and responsible way. But there's nothing about the technology that is environmentally challenged, and the track record is actually quite good. The one interesting thing on water we should all bear in mind, you say, well, that's still a lot of water. Sure, it is a lot of water, but what is the alternative? The alternative is to produce your power from coal. Coal production takes 10 times more water than producing natural gas through hydraulic fracturing, 10 times. Now, um, we have biofuels. Now, biofuels aren't used in electric power, but they're a source of energy. Who's worried about the water use on biofuels? Biofuels require 1,000 times more water per BTU of energy than natural gas from a hydraulic fractu fractured well. So, you know, there is a use of resources with everything, but there are choices. And when you look at this, you have to look at the environmental impact, the CO2 impact, the water impact, and, and good site practices. They may get adsorbed into the, the formation, or they may flow back. Some may flow back into the well bore when that frac water flows back and up the well, and then we filter it, reuse it, and if it can't be treated, like a, a normal industrial water treatment plant needs, then we may dispose of it into injection wells.